I've been reviewing books for you guys for over a year now, and I've never put out a list of my top 10 favorites. And it occurred to me this is actually kind of an important thing for me to do because it gives you a really good idea of my taste and whether or not our tastes will align a lot. Now, if they don't align, that's still fine and still feel free to watch my channel. It just means you're going to get a perspective from someone who might be a little different than yours. Just a warning, this isn't the top 10 books I think are technically the greatest. This is the top 10 books I got the most enjoyment out of reading or kind of just really infected or influenced the way I look at writing. And of course, the order is not exact. I mean, you know, number six to number seven, even number seven to number five. A lot of times I just had to put a book in the list and I didn't really know how I felt about one slot compared to the other. So they're just not in the perfect order. That being said, let's go ahead and jump in. So my number 10 book of all time is going to be The Things They Carried. I don't typically like postmodernist writing that much, and war books tend to bum me out a little bit, but I found this to be such a beautiful work. Tim O'Brien created something here that, to me, is just different. It just stands out from every other war book I've ever read, and it stands on its own as a very good usage of the postmodernist tools in writing. You don't know what's true, you don't know what's not, but all that you do know is that this book bleeds off the pages into your reading or your perception of what's going on in a very unique way. It's unavoidable, and I have a bigger review on it, so go ahead and watch that if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I want to go on to the next book, which I don't have a review of, and that is Flowers for Algernon. This book was an emotional gut punch I was not ready for. I actually regret earlier in this video saying that these were the books I enjoyed the most reading because I did not enjoy Flowers for Algernon. This book ripped my heart out and then stomped on it. It is such a sad story of a man with developmental disabilities who is cured through some scientific experiments and then he starts to lose the intelligence he gains and just the narrative the narrative here is such a fear that i think everyone has and the end result is something i've actually had nightmares about so if you want to have a cry fest and you want to read a classic which i'm sure a lot of you already have read please pick up flowers for algernon now number eight is something i'm sure almost everyone's read and that's the Harry Potter series. I know it's a cliche for a millennial to have this on their list, but this series has impacted so many people, and it deserves it. It's what a lot of us had as their first introduction to fantasy, and it was for me as well. And it was books that when I was growing up, my dad started reading to me, and I eventually picked up on my own, and they grew up with their audience, and so they grew up with me. There's some real problems with the series, but just on a personal level, Harry Potter massively influenced how I view fantasy, how I view reading, and I can't recommend enough going back and rereading the series or watching the movies because they've held up wonderfully. Uh, so I have a whole lot of love for Harry Potter, and you know what, deal with it that it's on this list because I know it's not held in the highest regard by a lot of hardcore fantasy fans, but I absolutely love it. So moving on to number seven, we have another series, and that is the Bobverse series. I know these have not been my most watched reviews. I know some people want me to stop ranting and raving about these books, but they are incredible. And I can quickly give you my review of the third book right now. It's a 10 out of 10. It has held up. It's awesome. This series asks a question that I personally, and I think many others, have had their whole lives. What if you were able to truly explore the universe? Not look at it from a distance, not observe, but really explore for eternity. And it, it, it the, the series jumps into that idea and just exploits it to, in my opinion, its full potential using technology to help character growth and having this one man become a society in his own is such a cool idea 
and I know some people don't really get into it as much, but just on a personal level, this series tackled something that I had wondered about and imagined for years. Go listen to my reviews if you want to know more about them, but I just think you should pick them up and start reading. And the narration on the audiobook is fantastic, so I think you should pick that up as well and go ahead and give them a listen to. Uh, for We Are Many was awesome, uh, We Are Legion was great, and all these worlds just kept the momentum going. Bob Verse is a solid 9 out of 10 every single time. At number six, we have the most iconic fantasy series of all time, hands down, undisputed, and that is The Lord of the Rings. I can't really say much about these books that hasn't already been said. They are nearly perfect. They laid the foundation for modern day fantasy. Even the criticisms some people have, like hating on the songs and poems and saying the world development isn't great, I completely disagree with, and I view the songs and poems as additional world development. I can't really criticize these books because they've aged so well and set such an incredible example. Tolkien is what we should all think of as the god of fantasy, and every other world that's been made in this genre is just a product of him in my mind. I know there were some fantasy books beforehand, and I know that there's been maybe arguably some better fantasy books afterward, but his influence and reach is what makes him so great, and every fantasy book I can think of that I've read since The Lord of the Rings became what it is has just been trying to capture what The Lord of the Rings originally did. At number five, we have the first books I read on my own as a child, and that's the Sherlock Holmes Collections 1 and 2. If you've watched the TV show and fallen in love with the character there, pick up the books, because there's a reason this character is one of the most redone again and again and again in all of fiction. It's because these books are magical. They are beautiful mysteries that you can almost never see the conclusion coming. But once you know it, going back and rereading it, Arthur, Arthur Conan Doyle did leave you the trails to get there, but he did it so masterfully, you can almost never do it before Sherlock does himself. I am a huge fan of the books. I love the TV show too in the first few seasons. It was great. And I think if you want to recapture what those first few seasons of Sherlock brought you, go ahead and pick up the book because it is what all mystery tries to be. At number four, we have the Stormlight Archive. I'm going to be honest, I was having a kind of lack of motivation to keep up with the fantasy genre until I came upon this series. Modern fantasy had kind of fizzled out for me in the last decade or two, especially since the Wheel of Time wrapped up, but Stormlight Archive brought me back in. Brandon Sanderson did something not many authors could do when he picked up the Wheel of Time after Robert Jordan passed and did a wonderful job of wrapping it up. And what this has allowed him to do is get enough eyes on his own works that I think over time, Brandon Sanderson will be remembered as one of the greats of fantasy. And I think the Stormlight Archive, even though it's not finished yet, just the groundwork that has been laid, I'm going to go ahead and say it's going to end up being a classic. Both of the first two books blew me out of the water. They are incredible. And if you want to know more about what I think, go ahead and go over to my reviews. But right now, we're going to jump on to number three in my top ten list, and that is the Girl With series. And just the first three books. I know another author has now added two, and this is not a Wheel of Time case where it is held up. That being said, the original three books are a wonderful look at what it means to be human, what it means to overcome being put down by society itself, and what it takes when you've been damaged and hurt again and again to reach out and still be human. How hard it is for those with mental issues or troubles to really build connections, and what that trust can really be like once it is finally established. I cannot recommend 
getting into the character of Elizabeth Salander enough, it kind of opens up a part of all of us deep down, I think, that we relate to. And I think that's why everyone loves this character so much. She exposes something that's in all of us, this wanting to be on the outside of society looking in, this wanting to be the downtrodden person who's able to just come back, take everything they need, and show everyone who really the genius is. I love the character Elizabeth Salander, and that's not an original opinion to have. Everyone does. And I I love a female lead who's handled well, and Elizabeth is that. She is the anti-hero that everyone wants to embody. I just can't get over how much this character carries the series, but not in a bad way. She is marvelous. Uh, so now moving on to number two, a lot of people probably saw this coming. It's the Wheel of Time series. I have talked enough about these books. Go watch my myriad of videos on them. I'm sure I have alienated some people who used to watch my channel because they don't like Wheel of Time or have never read it. So they kind of probably gave up on the idea of me ever making anything, any video about anything else. I'm not going to get into them. Let's move on to number one. That is The Old Man and the Sea. I will stand behind my claim till I die that this is the perfect book. And most things Ernest Hemingway wrote are on that level. I excluded more of his books from being on this list because if I didn't, half the list would be Hemingway. I want to talk about The Old Man and the Sea and his writing style. The Old Man and the Sea is an incredible allegory that this story just will grip you and throw you in with this man and his boat, and you will feel like you're sitting right next to him as he tries to reel in his catch. It is absolutely stunningly well done, and how well it grips the reader, in my opinion. And that's the beauty of Ernest Hemingway's writing style. He has an incredibly simplistic approach. There's no big fancy words. He doesn't go the extra mile to try to sound like he's better than everyone else, but he is a genius and it comes through in his simplistic writing style. It's a minimalist approach to the most beautiful way to tell a story. If you've not read a Hemingway book, in my opinion, you have not read some of the best stories that have ever been put to paper. And that's my top 10 list. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, like and subscribe if you have not already, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. Peace.